Let's begin. Name. Now, many patris at fili and spiritus sancti. Amen. Veni sancti spiritus repletuorum corda fidelium et ui amoris in eis inia macende. Emita spiritum tuum et creabuntur. Oremus. Deus qui corda fidelium, sancti spiritus illustratione da cuisti. Da nobis in iorem spiritu recta sapere, ed eius semper consolazione gaudere per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Great! Today is February 10, 2021. The Gospel of today comes from St. Mark, chapter 7, verses 14 to 23. Today is also, by the way, the feast, feast day of St. Scholastica. Okay, we're celebrating the Feast of St. Scholastica, Virgin, okay, who is the sister of St. Benedict, see? Siblings who are saints. Uh oh, what does Ava want? Siblings who are saints, great saints, right? Great saints. Okay, so let's read a little bit from the Gospel today. Jesus summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person. But the things that come out from within are what defile. When he got home from the crowd, his disciples questioned him about the parable and said to them, Are even you likewise without understanding? Do you not realize that everything that goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart, but the stomach, and passes through into the latrine. <laughs> Thus he declared all foods clean. But what comes out of a man, that is what defiles him. From within the man, from his heart, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. And all these evils come from within, and they defile. See, uh, the Jews, we were talking about them having plenty of rules, right? What is that? The Jews have plenty of rules that they have built around the Ten Commandments, okay? Plenty. And among those, they have determined that some types of food are unclean okay? and they have plenty of rituals that go along with preparing food and eating <laughs> and our Lord gives his apostles a little biology lesson <laughs> he tells them nope it is not what you put in and take in that makes you dirty that dirt is your body and soul because whatever you take in that goes out what really defiles a man is what comes from his heart. What comes from his heart. In other words, it's his behaviors, it's his thoughts, it's his words that issue from him as a person that really defiles him. Now, the first reading today, we continue with this, the story of creation. And in today's narration, it talks about the creation of man. Okay? It talks about how God formed man from the earth, and the Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. And the story goes that the Lord God took the man and settled him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate and care for it. The Lord God gave, this, gave, gave man this order. He gave man an order. You're free to eat from any of the trees of the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. From that tree you shall not eat. The moment you eat from it, you are surely doomed to die. 
it's interesting how, you know, talking about food and what defiles a man. The very first order that God gave the first man, Adam, was about eating. Yes, you can eat anything in the garden because this is all for you. I gave and made all of these things for you to, 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 uh, to use to nourish yourself. But he gave him an order. You can have all of this, but don't eat of the fruit of that particular tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But Adam couldn't obey. Couldn't resist the temptation and ate of the fruit of the tree. Of course, we're going to hear this story later on. right? But we're fast forwarding it and bringing it up now because that is exactly the message of the gospel today. That it is what comes from within the man that defiles him. But in the first place, how did it happen that man cooks up all of this very bad things from his thoughts to his words to his behaviors? What happened to him? Okay. What happened to him is narrated in the first reading. It's in Genesis. You see, God created man to be good from the very beginning. See? God created man to be good. In fact, that is the way that Genesis always concludes every narration of every day of creation. Right? God saw that it was good the first day. Then the second day concludes the same way. God saw that it was good. All the way to the sixth day when he created man. God saw that it was good. Because God created everything to be good. How is it that we are not that good anymore? <laughs> we are not keeping up to the nature that God has created us to be. Which is to be good. Why is it that now from the heart of every man, right, can come all of these evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, etc. If he was created to be good, why is it that now he's capable of doing all of these very evil things? The root of this is, of course, original sin. Right? As we are going to see in uh, the coming days, narration uh, continuing with the first reading. The root of it is original sin. And what is that sin all about? What is original sin all about? Well, it's actually rooted in the sin of pride, right? But it's twofold. The sin of pride of Adam and Eve there was expressed by way of disobedience. Adam disobeyed that one, only one singular rule that God gave him. Don't eat of the fruit of that tree. And yet he couldn't find himself to obey. Okay? So the sin of pride and disobedience is what caused man his downfall. And from that one original sin, the whole of human nature got corrupted. See, that is the, that's the theology behind that. The whole of the nature of man got corrupted. That is why now we couldn't see the good properly. We couldn't understand the good in things the way they should be. And because of that, our will is also incapable of pursuing what is good, of doing what is good. We struggle to doing good things because our nature has been corrupted by sin. But you know what? The solution, the simple solution to trying to regain that, that uh, 
original state of goodness, which of course we cannot anymore regain in a perfect sense, but we can approximate it. Okay? There's a simple strategy to try to regain that good nature. And that is precisely by performing the very virtue that Adam did not practice. And what is that? The virtue of obedience. The virtue of obedience. You see, pride is the root of all sin. So all of these sins that were enumerated here by our Lord, you know, uh, malice, you know, uh, 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 sorry, where was that? Um, all the uncleanness of the heart from evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed. All of these things are rooted in pride. Okay? The pride, the rebellion of Satan that he has tempted Adam and Eve to also follow him uh, 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 with or through. Okay? It's, it, it all stems from that sin of pride. And disobedience is a product of that. But it's harder for us to understand pride. It's harder for us to understand humility. It's easier to understand obedience. That is why even in the command of our Lord, he did not say, don't be proud. Okay? He only gave Adam one simple, don't eat that. It was a test of obedience. Because obedience is an expression of humility. Humility is the opposite of pride. Okay? So, obedience is an easier virtue to, uh, not, not really that easy, but it's an easier virtue for us to understand and put into practice. Okay? So let us remember that in order to cure all of the evil tendencies that we have inside, there's an easier path than fighting out all of those things altogether. The easier path is the path of obedience. The path of obedience. Obey people in authority over us. Obey those who, by the grace of God, have the duty of guiding our souls towards virtue, towards doing the right thing. Okay? And every one of us have that kind of a person besides us all the time. For you, children, it'll be your parents. It'll be your parents. And the simplest way we could obey God is to first obey our parents. The simplest way we can obey, uh, you know, for anybody else to follow what God might have, what God might want for your life is to follow somebody who can guide you towards that life of virtue and obedience to the will of God. See? Obedience is a necessary virtue if we are to rid ourselves of all the other bad tendencies that emanate from us, okay? that come from us. We need to obey. Obedience has a very humbling effect that it allows us to submit ourselves to the authority of God. By submitting ourselves first to the authority of people around us who can guide our souls. So as we, as we approach Lent, we are about a week away from Lent now. Let's consider this virtue. Let's consider how we obey people God has put beside us to help us through this life, to help us follow the will of God and follow the path to heaven. Because all of us, have that person whether you like it or not every one of us we are all subjected to some kind of authority and that's not necessarily a bad thing it's a good thing because that's how God wants to lead us to heaven 
He put somebody beside us that we could emulate, that we could, whose example we can follow, whose suggestions we can take to heart, and many times, whose commands we need to obey. See? God places instruments, His instruments in our lives to guide us. Let us learn to listen. Let us learn to listen to the advice of these people and follow their lead. Be obedient. Be obedient to the will of God by being obedient to the people He has put close to you to help you guide your lives towards heaven. Okay. So this time of Lent, it's a very good opportunity for us to consider how we live this virtue. And this virtue is not only for children <laughs> to obey their parents. Right? God, in all his wisdom, he has chosen to put people beside us. He has chosen to use instruments, other people, to help guide our souls. And to them, to these people, we owe some obedience, some listening, some paying attention to. Okay? If we are to discern the will of God for us. So let's learn to obey. In the season of Lent, let's learn to obey. Okay? Okay, Eva. <laughs> We're done here, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Hope to see you again tomorrow. And is Eva going to say goodbye? Say goodbye, Eva. Bye. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye, bye, -bye. everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>